There's nothing we can do, is a quote allegedly from Napoleon, but you've probably seen it in an edited version with this music and with a changed meaning. But where does the quote come from? And most importantly, why is there nothing we can do? To answer these questions, we need to go deeper into Napoleon's downfall. After a failed invasion against Russia, Napoleon offered to step down as a leader in favor of his son. This offer was rejected, and he was instead abdicated and sent to the island of Elba. You might think that this is the island where the quote and the meme that followed originated, but that's actually not the case. He managed to escape his exile in Elba, and ended up back in Paris, where he regained supporters and got back his title as emperor. This was a period known as the Hundred Days. Just a short while after this, in June 1815, Napoleon was defeated once again at the bloody Battle of Waterloo, marking the end of France's domination of Europe. This led him to abdicate for a second time, but this time was different. The British needed a prison for the most powerful man in the world, much more remote than Elba, in which the word escape was unthinkable. Their answer laid in the South Atlantic, a small scrap of land a thousand miles off the African coast, just a tiny dot on the world map, St. Helena. Napoleon and his loyal staff crowded onto the court deck to get a glimpse of their new home. They were military men, and they knew one thing was for certain. There would be no possibility of rescue, no possibility of escape. They were here for good. Napoleon said in a bitter tone, this is an unlovely place. The British even had 3,000 men guarding Napoleon at all times of the day. Napoleon disagreed with the term prisoner of war. He instead thought he was a prisoner of state, resenting the fact that he was trapped on the island unlawfully. He quickly settled into a routine, getting up late, usually around 10 a.m. to have breakfast, but he rarely left his house, Longwood. He was free to go anywhere on the island as long as he was accompanied by an English officer. But for Napoleon, this became unbearable, leading him to become a recluse, refusing to leave his house. So how did he spend his days as a recluse? He wrote a lot, completing what would become an entire memorial with the help of his secretary. Around 7 to 8 p.m. he ate dinner, after which he enjoyed listening to classic books read out loud. After this, he usually played cards. The food and climate of St. Helena was quite pleasant. Despite its remote location in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, Napoleon ate good food in plentiful amounts and enjoyed nice weather. He even received hundreds of visitors to the island between 1816 and 1817. All of this sounds pretty sweet, right? Well, be it the huge lifestyle change or the constant feeling of isolation on the island, Napoleon's mental health started deteriorating rapidly. He tried to keep his appearance under heavy control, wanting to be seen as dignified as possible in the presence of visitors, although he was only a prisoner. He reportedly spent a few hours a day in his bathtub, probably thinking and becoming more and more pessimistic as the days passed. At this point, someone asked him, isn't there anything we can do, sir? In which Napoleon allegedly told his staff, there's nothing we can do. With this, the man had become nihilistic and hopeless. The philosophy of nihilism is, essentially, the belief in nothing. They reject accepted or fundamental aspects of human existence, such as knowledge, morality, or meaning, and say that life is inherently meaningless and how there's no point to doing anything. But we must revolt against nihilism, not becoming Napoleon on St. Helena. There's a great contrasting quote from Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. There are no hopeless situations. There are only hopeless people. I never lost my hope. Sure, life can feel meaningless lots of times, but it's how we react to these circumstances that seal our fate. The emperor simply gave up and saw himself in a truly hopeless situation. But we can't do what Napoleon did, losing our hope completely. The human spirit always prevails. He was a great man who almost took over the entire world, but eventually fell into despair. We ourselves can't fall into the trap of nihilistic hopelessness, although the thought can be an easy way out, even comforting. On the 5th of May, 1821, Napoleon laid on his deathbed in the Longwood house, defeated and hopeless. His last words on St. Helena were reported as being, I wish my ashes to rest on the banks of the Seine, in the midst of that French people which I have loved so much. I die before my time. 
killed by the English oligarchy and its hired assassins.